Hey kids, welcome back. I hope you had a nice Easter. And uh, here we are. It's week six of, uh, of the quarantine, but who's counting, right? Uh, I hope you guys are well today. We're going to continue on with our study uh, this month. And we're talking about the fact that Jesus is the Savior of the world. Uh, today we're going to talk specifically uh, about God's salvation and the fact that it's a gift that everybody needs and can receive. And the story for today is of you know, Doubting Thomas. That was his nickname uh, in the Bible. It's a story that many of you are probably familiar with, and it's a story that many Christians are also familiar with. Uh, so I just want to remind you, uh, I'm going to ask you, if, do you remember this month's unit verse? Does anybody remember this month's unit verse? What book of the Bible does it come from? Uh, and what verse is it? Anybody? Well, if you said John 14, 6, you are correct. So if you have a Bible, I want you to turn to John 14, 6, or you can just look back here uh, at this chart. And so John 14, 6 says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So... Jesus is claiming, uh, you know, exclusivity, that, you know, the only way that you can know God and come to God is through Jesus, and he's right. This week, we're going to be looking at another verse. This is our weekly verse. Uh, it's from John 3.16, and I'm sure some light bulbs are going off right now. Many of you can probably recite John 3.16 without even looking at it. Uh, up in your Bible. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and read it just so that I don't, you know, butcher it. Um, okay, ready? Say this with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 3.16. Okay, so Again, we're going to be talking today about God's salvation and that people can believe that Jesus is the Savior of the world, just like John 3.16 says. We're actually going to play a game right now. So, uh, you know, if you're watching this and you have siblings who are taking a nap, I guess try to be quiet. Uh, if your parents are uh, enjoying church in the other room, Again, try to try to be as calm as possible as we play this. But this should be a pretty fun game. Um, it's called Believe It or Not. So, if you're in a room, uh, stand up, move to the middle of the room. I have to clear some stuff out of the way because you're going to be going back and forth, back and forth. Um, so, if you're looking at me and you're standing in the middle of the room, which I hope you are, this wall is going to be the Believe It wall. This wall is going to be the not wall. So I'm going to read a statement. If you believe it's true, I want you to run over to this wall. Uh, if you don't believe that it's true, I want you to run over to this wall. If you're somehow watching this outside or you're in a room without walls, uh, if you believe that what I'm saying is true, raise your left hand. If you don't believe that what I'm saying is true, raise your right hand. You got it? Okay, here we go. The cheetah is the fastest land animal in the world. I'll give you three seconds to make a choice. The cheetah is the fastest land animal in the world. Go. Okay. If you ran to this wall, the Believe It wall, you are correct. The cheetah is the fastest land animal in the world. Okay. Everybody get back to the middle of the room. Cheetahs usually hunt at night. Cheetahs usually hunt at night. If you believe it, run to this wall. If you don't, run to this wall. Okay, it's false. Cheetahs actually hunt during the day. So if you ran to this wall, you are correct. Back to the middle of the room. Ready? Here's the third statement. Tigers are good swimmers. Tigers are good swimmers. True or false? If you think it's true, run to this wall. False, run to this wall. Okay, the answer is true. Tigers are actually wonderful swimmers. 
Uh, and next time you go swimming, you can try to imitate a tiger. Uh, fourth statement. Cheetahs are the only big cats that cannot roar. Cheetahs are the only big cats that cannot roar. True or false? It's true. If you ran to that wall or you raised your left hand, you are correct. Cheetahs are the only big cats that cannot roar. <laughs> Next statement. There are more wild tigers than there are pet tigers. True or false that there are more wild tigers than there are pet tigers? Okay, if you said false, you are correct. There are actually more pet tigers uh, than there are wild tigers. Next statement. A group of tigers is called an ambush. A group of tigers is called an ambush. If you think it's true, this wall. False, this wall. If you said false, you are wrong. Did I throw you off? Uh, a group of tigers is an ambush. That is correct. So if you ran to this wall, you are the winner. Uh, cheetahs love to climb trees. True or false? Cheetahs love to climb trees. Okay, if you said false, you are correct. Because cheetahs cannot climb trees. <laughs> Next statement. Cheetahs must drink water several times a day. True or false? Okay, you ran to this wall, you are correct, because it's false. They only need to drink every three to four days. <laughs> Next statement. Tigers like to hunt at night. Tigers like to hunt at night. True or false? Okay, if you ran to this wall or raised your left hand, you are correct, because tigers do like to hunt at night. I guess that means they're nocturnal. I don't know. Uh, I'm not going to go walk around in the jungle and find out. Uh, last statement, and I want to challenge you on this one, because if you get it wrong, I want you to do like 25 push-ups. Okay? Tigers cannot jump very far. True or false? Now remember, you're going to have to do 25 push-ups if you get this wrong. So, tigers cannot jump very far. If you think it's true, this wall. False, this wall. Ready? False. They can jump over 15 feet. Okay. Well, hopefully you all had fun. Uh, and we're going to move on to our lesson. <laughs>it's story time now before I read the story I want you to imagine that you're in a locked room okay uh, could be your bedroom the kitchen wherever so you're in a locked room you're in there by yourself or maybe with some friends what would have to happen for somebody to come into the room it's not a trick question anybody yes they would have you would have to unlock the door for them or they'd have to use a key right that's the only way they could get into the room. Well, in today's Bible story, the disciples were in a locked room. And it comes from the book of John. And I want you to, to listen closely and see what happens. Jesus is alive. On the same night his disciples heard that Jesus was alive, they gathered together in a secret place with the door securely locked. They were afraid of the people who had arrested and put Jesus to death. Suddenly, Jesus was with them. Peace be with you, Jesus said. He showed the disciples where his hands and side were hurt when he was on the cross. The disciples were very glad to see Jesus. Jesus explained that he was sending them to tell others. He promised to send the Holy Spirit. He told the disciples to forgive others. Thomas one of Jesus' disciples was not with the group. When the other disciples told Thomas what had happened, Thomas did not believe them. Thomas insisted, If I don't see and feel the marks that the nails made in his hands and side, I will not believe it. Eight days later, the disciples were together, and this time Thomas was with them. The door was locked. 
But that did not stop Jesus from coming and standing with the disciples. Peace be with you, Jesus said to them. Then Jesus went to Thomas. Put your finger on my hands and look at them. Put your hands into my side. Believe in me. Thomas realized that it was all true. Jesus was alive. Jesus had died, but he rose again and was standing next to him. Thomas exclaimed, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to Thomas, You believe because you have seen me for yourself. Blessed are those who have not seen and still believe. Jesus did many other things when he appeared to his disciples after the resurrection. Jesus' disciple, John, wrote this gospel so that many people may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Savior, who gives eternal life. So, Jesus said, Blessed are those who believe and have not seen. And so, sometimes, seeing is not always believing, and believing is not always seeing. We can't be Thomas, right? We, we, we can't go back over 2,000 years uh, and see our risen Lord. Any more than we could go back to 1863 and watch Abraham Lincoln sign the Emancipation Proclamation. Okay? We all accept as fact that Abraham Lincoln was one of the great presidents of the United States, the 16th president. We accept this because we have many historical accounts of his life um, and people who interacted with him and saw him and talked to him. Uh, we have one of his great works being the Emancipation Proclamation, and it's no different with Jesus. You see, the Bible is more than just a collection of stories. It's a historical account. This stuff actually happened. And the Gospels are full of eyewitness testimonies. People who uh, saw Jesus, heard him speak, witnessed his power, uh, power to cast out demons and do miracles. And so we don't have to uh, doubt that because we have many uh, examples of, of what he's done. And not only that, but last week, you know, was Easter, and, and we saw that, yes, he died on a cross, but he rose from the dead, and he paid the penalty for our sin and purchased a place for us in heaven, and, and he appeared to many people after he resurrected from the dead. Hundreds of people, actually. Um, so we can believe, just like Thomas did, even though we haven't seen. And Jesus said, if we do that, we will be blessed. So in closing, uh, we started off this morning talking about Jesus being the Savior of the world. And what I want you to learn today is that God's salvation is a gift that everybody needs and can receive. And so I want to talk to you about that. You see, heaven is a free gift. It's not something that we can earn or deserve. And the reason we can't earn or deserve it is because of what the Bible says about man. Man is a sinner. And he cannot save himself. Remember we talked last week about the, the different kinds of sin. And I had the board. And you know we had like lying, uh, stealing, dishonoring your father and mother. Right? All of those things are sins. Um, there are tons more. But that's the gist of it. And so, um, uh, you know, as we talked about, man is a sinner. He cannot save himself. Um and the reason he can't save himself is because of what the Bible says about God. Now, we know that God is merciful, right? We started this morning reading from the book of John, uh, John 3, 16. It said, God so loved the world that he sent his only son. And that's, that's wonderful and it's true. But the same God is also a just God. And he can't, because of his justice and goodness, let sin go unpunished. Okay? Now, that sounds like a problem to us, but God solved this problem in the person of Jesus Christ. And as we, as we learned last week, Jesus died on the cross, and he rose from the dead. And when he did that, he paid the penalty for our sin, a penalty that we could never pay ourselves. And there was a transaction that took place. 
because he purchased a place for us in heaven when he did that. Now, this gift that God offers us can only be accepted through faith. And it has to be accepted as a gift because, again, no amount of religious work or effort or, or anything that we do uh, will, will earn us enough favor with God. We have to accept it as a gift. And the best way to understand faith is to understand what faith is not. And faith is not just head knowledge. You know, believing or, or knowing that Abraham Lincoln was the 16th president isn't necessarily the same thing as believing it. Um, true saving faith isn't just temporary. You know, sometimes we trust God for the temporary things of life, like getting us home safely if we're on an airplane or uh, getting us through like a little medical emergency. Um, but true saving faith is putting your trust in Jesus and Jesus Christ alone for your eternal salvation. That means if, if God were to ask you, you know, why should I let you into my heaven? You would say, well, well God, it's not for anything that I've done, but what you did through your son Jesus, right? I'm going to read you a, a verse, a couple verses out of Romans um, that'll kind of maybe help put this in perspective. This is from Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. And it says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. So you see, unlike Thomas, we don't necessarily have to have um, lived during the same era as Jesus. We don't necessarily have had to seen him uh, die on that cross to know that these things happened. And, and God says it very plainly, you know, believe in your heart and you will be saved. Confess with your mouth, you'll be saved. So uh, I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and you had fun playing our game. And next week, we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit. So tune in for that. And again, I hope you guys will just remember, be good for your parents, right? This is a very difficult time for everybody, and the best thing that you can do is to listen to them and obey, right? See you guys. Bye.